Hey, welcome everyone to a special edition of Story Trading. Today we have the COO of Good Gaming here, uh, David Sterling. But before we do that, just got to go through a couple of slides. A disclaimer first, Story Trading is not an investment advisor. Investing in securities that involves significant risk of loss. If you're watching the recording and not yet part of our community wondering what is a story trade, Story trading is the practice of understanding market pricing through the lens of the four pillars of fundamentals, catalyst, sentiment, and technicals. We have a nice, closed, uh, tight-knit community where we collaborate now on WhatsApp and on Zoom, and we're building our own iOS and Android app to bring that experience to a wider audience. Make sure to hop onto our website at storytrading.com and sign up for the beta release of that app. Uh, on our website, you can also check out VIP picks, of which uh, Good Gaming is one. Uh, ticker symbol GMER. Last trade. I don't know what I closed that today, but when I made this this morning, it was around seven cents with a market cap of five point. Five million dollars. It's an NFT gaming company, and again, we got the CEO of David Sterling, and this is the game, by the way, Micro Buddies, right there. We'll get into it in just a second. First, a quick look at the chart uh, at Story Trading. We want to understand the story behind the trade through the collaborative research that we do. Understand the ups and the downs, uh, and part of that research is meeting with management, and that gives us some shed some light on these four pillars: sentiment, catalyst, fundamentals, and technicals, which can help us understand uh, why price assets are priced where they are. And with that, David, uh, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it, Ben. Just glad, glad, very happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you so much for carving out some time. So yeah, if, if you can start with just a few minute introduction of, of what's going on at Good Gaming and with Micro Buddies, and then we have lots of good questions for you after that. Sure. Uh, we launched Micro Buddies uh, just a little over a month ago, uh, December 17th. I joined the company on January 10th as its chief operating officer. Um, before that, I spent, uh, among other things, 17 years doing business development uh, at Sony Pictures, um, where I um, launched uh, several different entertainment-related uh, verticals inside of the studio itself. Uh, launched uh, Loot Interactive, which was a game developer, app developer. Uh, we did VR and all sorts of different kinds of uh, entertainment related uh, software engineering development. Um, and re most recently was managing director of uh, Chicago for Real Entertainment, which focused on uh, creating uh, live streaming and on demand uh, entertainment experiences, mostly on the Twitch platform. Um, Good Gaming just launched uh, our newest NFT game, our first NFT game called Micro Buddies, more of an evolutionary game where you manipulate the dominant recessive genes of your characters and to create uh, uh, new and exciting different variations of those characters as you go along. So, as with most NFTs, they you start off at the basics and then work their way up into more advanced uh, NFTs, uh, more rare, you know, it's all a rare scarcity type play uh, that the gamer, uh, the gamer is actually involved in and in, in creating directly with the engine itself. Um, so uh, you joined January 10th, uh, a few weeks after the game launch. So were, were you involved like uh, before that, were you involved at all with anything leading up to the game launch or when did we actually start? No, I started January 10th. Okay, so you yeah. came in, walked in the door January 10th, so you had to kind of catch up with uh, the exactly. game that was just launched. Okay, all right. So why, why don't you tell us where things are now, how that game launched? We showed the chart earlier. There was a lot of excitement and enthusiasm around the stock last year when it was announced that you guys were going to launch this game. Uh, but then when it came to launch time and then post-launch, things so far hasn't didn't hasn't seemed to taken off either with the stock or with the game. So uh, at least that's our perception of it right now. Yeah, that's, so tell I us think, how things are going. I think that's a fair assessment in terms of if you're looking at the uh, the chart itself. Uh, we do have a very healthy community uh, on Discord that is uh, c consistently playing the game and bringing in new players. So I think that will probably be reflective in the in the stock in the future. Um, we're concentrating on uh, always improving our experience for our players. Uh, we're constantly releasing uh, updates to the game uh, and improving the gameplay uh, on a regular basis. And we have this is a long term play for us. Um, this isn't just a uh, one and done type thing. So we're looking at expanding the IP, uh, expanding the gameplay and, and uh, doing different things with 
as time goes on with the uh, Mike Frey's franchise. Are there any like fundamental issues uh, the management or the development team have identified in terms of the, the logic of the game uh, or the business model of the game that maybe needs to be improved or revisited at this point? Well, I don't think uh, improved is, is, a, is a word. We're always making sure that the game is, uh, is, is the quality of the game is the best it could possibly be. And that, that if you're familiar with uh, game development is, is an ongoing process. So we're constantly uh, looking for ways to improve the experience of the game. If you look at our press release uh, yesterday, we launched this um, a program called uh, the Buddy Masters program, which is going to uh, improve the onboarding of new players and also give existing players an avenue to uh, improve, not just improve, but uh, enhance the gameplay uh, for the community. So the, the one thing that I, I'm bringing to the table is uh, a focus on the community and building that community and maintaining that community. So we're in constant contact and, and all day, day and night with our community making sure that uh, if there are any issues with you know bugs that would come up during during a gameplay that they're addressed immediately and and making sure that the the gameplay experience is what uh, is what our players expect and is the highest quality so i mean game development is always an ongoing process you you just don't uh, develop a game and then release it and walk away from it um, that's that's actually it's actually the opposite you're consistently involved in what's going on with the community and the gameplay experience and always looking for ways to improve it. And that's what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely understand that process of iterative uh, development, yeah, iterative right. improvements, but in, in terms of fundamentally at the, the lot, you know, the, the business, the, the, not the business model, but the, you know, just at the core, is there any, uh, cause we, we've been hearing some commentary from some game players that, that, the game is like fundamentally flawed uh and i i'm not a player i'm not in there but you know people suggesting that it needs a real radical change so i'm wondering if your team has identified any fundamental issues that would require a big change rather than iterative changes i don't think so i think i think the game is pretty solid in terms of the way you know it's mechanism it's an evolution game right you're you're mm -hmm. taking certain micro buddies at, at the beginning of their existence and then evolving them along the way based upon your decision making. Um, I think that mechanism works fairly pretty well. Uh, our players are certainly involved on a regular basis in terms of giving us feedback with tickets and what have you. But in terms of, I would say, fundamental problems, no, I don't think that exists at all. One of the complaints I heard was that the people who paid a certain amount of money to get those original uh gen zero uh, you know uh, uh micro buddies from your website like before it launched mm -hmm. uh turned out not to be a good investment for them right like so how isn't that a big deal like shouldn't the people who are buying it first somehow should benefit them like is there a way to fix that going forward well i i, I don't i don't know what you're speaking of i i know that our uh most of the gen zeros have been um has been used by our players. Uh, there's still some outstanding that I think people are hanging on for investment purposes. Um, this is a this is a long term uh, uh, undertaking for us. Uh, it's a franchise for us, and I, I'm not sure of what what type of issues they're having. But you know, if they if they are having those kinds of issues, they should jump in our Discord and make us aware of it. Okay. Uh by the way, John, who's in the group, feel free since you know you were the one who brought this uh, sock to our attention. You know better than anyone, so if you have any questions, feel free to just raise your hand or just unmute yourself and jump in anytime you'd want. Uh, I think you have some more insights into that. Um, so, uh, what I, I guess there's some sort of major patch coming up. I think John, you were telling me about that right before we got on the call. Uh, can you do you know about what's coming up next? Like, what are some major changes that may be coming? Well, we're we're constantly working on it. I'm not sure that this is the forum to be start talking about our roadmap, um, but we we're, we have a roadmap to our game that we're looking towards uh, improving 
all aspects of it. So we're consistently taking feedback from our, our partners, our players, and looking towards how we can improve the gameplay process and, and the onboarding process, which Buddy Masters is uh, one of the avenues that we came up with to help improve that onboarding process for players. Okay. I mean, you're always making it, in, in game development, you're always looking at your processes and looking at how you can improve them. Uh, like I said, you never come out day one and it's it's a guaranteed, uh, you know, 100% uh, uh, finished experience and then you just turn around and walk away to the next project. That's not how game, if you look at any game, whether an NFT game or a console game or mobile game, they're con you're constantly in development and, and improvement with your team. Okay, so I uh, wonder if you can give me some more insight on I know you you don't want to get into the specifics of the roadmap, but maybe longer term roadmap like vision, because I'm not a NFT gamer. Uh, I'm a little bit older. I mean, I game I did gaming when I was younger. So uh, let's say, man, I'm gonna like Super Mario Brothers back in the day. Sure. Right? Like I, I used to play games like that. And when I heard about this NFT gaming, I'm like, hmm, this this sounds kind of cool because my my perception or vision of it was I play a game like super mario brothers or whatever like a yeah. traditional game yeah and then maybe based on how well my character does or whatever like i'm playing the game and then i can there's economic value to how well i play the game and then maybe i could sell that you know on well, a that's, platform that's somewhere whole, like yeah. that's the whole right? point about nfts right is that yeah. once once the the game has in the in, in the generic sense once once the whole idea behind gaming is started originally back you know in nintendo days if you want to go back to pong or whatever but you you would buy the game and you would play the game and then you know when you were done with that experience the best solution you had to you know offload it or or you know get get some money back would go and sell it to somebody uh, either a friend of yours or, you know, as stores popped up like Blockbuster and all those Hollywood video, you, you'd be able to trade it in or sell it to a, and they would turn around and resell it. That was the extent of the gamer uh, uh, journey economically, right? So what NFTs have done, and that, that, that continued through all console games and, and, you know, the best you could do would trade it in and, you know, upgrade to the next game that would come in. Now with you know blockchain and and that, that NFTs and the technology behind that, gamers could now gamers can uh, create something using an engine like, for instance, Micro Buddies, and create uh, a set of Micro Buddies and and have goo and things like that, and be able to trade it with other gamers or you know uh, sell it to other people or take that and maybe it creates other out you know, outside out world, real world experiences uh, that allows them to, you know, achieve status and identity within the community or, you know, gives them some kind of real world benefit. That's, that's the real, you know, that underlying technology of blockchain and smart contracts and things like that, that really uh, elevate the gaming experience outside of just, I'm paying $60 for a cartridge or a download uh, and then maybe I'll be able to download. You can't do that really, but maybe I could turn that game into GameStop if they're still around and, and create some kind of economic value to me uh, when I'm done playing it. Um, so I hope that answers your question. It's just, I think that, you know, for in, back to your question in terms of roadmap, we're going to try and expand on those kinds of uh, experiences and help elevate, increase the gameplay and, and broaden the gameplay to other types of experiences that our players would not only have fun, but also if they chose to um, benefit from trading with other players or creating things that maybe have value to somebody else within the community. But our, our, our goal for this game, uh, just like any other game developer, is to make sure that the gaming experience is, is a quality one and we're consistently uh, focused on improving you know, you're all, there's always room for improvement. So we're consistently looking at and improving our game experience for our players. Okay, so I just wanna make sure I understand this right. Because when I look at, I've seen like videos of, of the game and screenshots and stuff, and it, it looks like the only purpose of the game right now is to create something that might have some economic value that you could go sell on OpenSea, right? It, it, 
Well, is there gameplay within the game itself? Like you, you create something and then you have fun with it or you, you achieve goals and you, it doesn't yeah, seem to be there sure. yet, right? No, no it's there. It, you, uh, I think it's, it's an evolutionary game. So the, the, the idea of uh, manipulating the dominant recessive genes of the, of the item, of the buddy itself, creates a higher level of buddy. So the idea is to get to a divine buddy. And the only way to do that is to properly uh, manipulate their dominant recessive genes of each buddy and, and combine the, it's just like crypto kitties where you're combining yeah. these, these buddies, your, your collection of buddies into trying to create a divine buddy. Right, but and, what does that divine buddy do? What, what's, the, what's the benefit of that divine buddy? Well, I, it's, it's a, it's, it's scarcity and, and identity and status for the person who is able to create it. So, right. And I guess my question is, are there going to, in the roadmap, are there going to be additional gameplay features with those higher level buddies? So, so it can have value in of itself outside of the economic value, you know, what, of trading it. So are, are yeah, there we, plans for functions and, and gameplay within the game itself when you have these higher level buddies? Yeah. As we start to do, uh, look towards additional development of the game. The idea is that all, at all different levels, these these buddies, you just don't cast away your your lower level buddies because they may have value to other players coming in. Like for instance, if you read the press release of the micro of the the buddy masters, like that would may have value to other players who may be starting the game, and and you know you'd have to go to Open C to to look at buddies, and and we're going to uh, include ways for players to be able to understand how, it, what the features of these, these specs of these buddies are and how does that fit into their plan for the game? Uh, it's a lot of exploration. I think it's, it's really interesting. If the player has to take time to be able to understand how to explore these buddies and what their traits mean and how to combine them together to create, um, more rare and, and higher level buddies. So it's kind of it's an it's an evolutionary engine that that you manipulate to create higher forms of buddies. And if you look at some of the artwork, it's amazing. It's when I first looked at the game, I thought, "Wow, this is almost like an artwork machine uh, engine that these players can manipulate the artwork in such ways to create unique pieces of artwork." But I thought I found that. What are, do you know? Do you have a what? What are the possible number of different buddies that can be created combination oh wow I, you know i heard it's extraordinary in terms of the number of buddies to be that can be created because of the number of features and 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 yeah. because we have we have a significant amount of but i mean there's 10 10 categories of buddies so um it's it's a multiple of that i think 70 zeros maybe it's, it's, it's an extraordinary yeah. amount of buddies. I don't okay. know what that number would be. I don't know the okay. name of that number. Um, all right. So I just want to, I'm sharing my screen here, you know, looking at this uh, again, I'm trying to understand the value of the game. And, and right now, you know, as shareholders, we're looking at this and this is what we see in terms of value, right? You create these buddies and then you can see the economic value on OpenSea and it hasn't been going in the right direction. I, I guess you're looking at this also. So two questions. Number one, are we missing something? Is there some other value to these buddies that aren't shown here on OpenSea? Or uh, maybe you've acknowledged it's not going in the right direction and, you know. No, you, I, uh, well, you have a plan? I would look at it this way. Uh, when I looked at that, looked at the OpenSea chart, I look at it like this way. You have 1,400 owners of buddies. They've made so far 51,000 versions of micro buddies. So if the game was broken and didn't uh, wasn't working properly, and the the experience wasn't uh, uh, one that was enjoyable, you would have a much lower number in terms of the amount of buddies that are being created, because people wouldn't be playing. That's that that uh, you know, I would say it's not fifty x, but it's forty x. Uh, is a significant amount of buddies that are being created utilizing the engine. So the people that are playing are really enjoying the game and the challenge of the game itself. Now, what we, what our job is to do is to increase the amount of owners 
and look at our processes to make sure that we are we have a smooth low on ramp uh, so we can onboard our players easily. And that is something that when you're in game development, you're always looking towards to see at the beginning, are the players having an easy way to understand the game and to play the game. And that is a consistent uh, challenge to make sure as a developer to make sure that that is a, a, as smooth a process as possible. And after that, you know, the thing should take care of itself. If it's a good game, then we have good marketing behind it. We're reaching out to players. We're making sure that we're, uh, our focus is on the customer, that their, their experience is a good one. And when we see that people are playing that, making that many buddies, then at least we know that you know, when, when the players come in, they're having a good time and, and they understand the game. So our goal is to make sure that that is a consistent experience across new players also. Okay. Um... I want to get into a little bit of finance, financial, uh, corporate financial and operations. But before that, I do that, I should have asked you at the beginning up front, uh, you're new to the company three weeks. So what, why did you decide to join Good Gaming? What's your, what's your vision? What attracted you to the opportunity? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's similar to what I've been doing. Uh, this is just the beginning in terms of what we're doing in this space. And my experience in, in other spaces, I think there's a great opportunity for micro buddies as an IP. When I saw the IP itself, I thought that there are a lot of different things that we could be doing with the IP um, in the gaming space and outside of the gaming space. There's a, there's a significant amount of room for growth for the company. Um, and I thought I could bring my, my experience into it and make that, uh, uh, make that happen. Okay. Uh, can you give us, uh, before I get into specific questions, can you give us a little overview on operations in terms of uh, number of employees, number of developers, where you guys are located, any kind of overview on operations that would be helpful? Yeah, we're, we're uh, a lot of the company is uh, remote. So I'm in Chicago, or we have a development team all over the country. Uh, we also have uh, development services that we're utilizing uh, for through third parties um, to, to uh, uh, do some development work for us, uh, both on the game and, and outside of other areas. Um, it's, it, we're, right now we're about six people, seven people. Uh, most of it's all in development. Um, we have marketing services uh, on the corporate side that uh, for finance and marketing that we utilize. Um, but mainly it's uh, the development team is about six people. Okay, and it's re remote, these six? Yeah, everybody is remote. Okay, all right, cool. And then uh, I'm not, I haven't looked it up. I don't know what's publicly available, but what, what can you tell us about the cash uh, position and, and the cash burn? Um, and any kind of information given on that would be helpful. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to defer that to our CFO um, because uh, I want to make sure that we're giving the proper information. I don't have that on hand with me right now, but I could definitely furnish that to you guys uh, you know, after I gather that information for you. Oh, yeah. If you could email us whatever you're allowed sure. to give us. Dominic, yeah, uh, yeah Dominic Fortuny is our CFO and he'd be able to uh, answer those questions for you. Okay. I believe there's... a. Uh... A parent company associated yeah, Via with One Services. Via One. What's the story with Via One? Tell us more about that. I don't uh, know much about it myself. I just heard about. They're it. kind of a Berkshire Hathaway type company that owns a bunch of different types of businesses. Um, Good Gaming being one of them. Um, they're located in Dallas and Pennsylvania, and you can do the research on who they are. So what you know, like what percent? They own a percentage of good gaming, right? I guess. You know, I, I I'd know I'd have that. to defer and and make sure that I give you the exact numbers. Uh, I don't want okay. to. Okay. I don't wanna are they that. involved operationally at all, or they're just share a shareholder of good gaming? Oh no, they're shared services with uh, good gaming. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give us a little color on that? Like, what kind of shared services? Uh, get marketing from them? and finance, back office stuff. Okay, marketing, finance, back office. But yeah. as far as the development and the development team, that's that's all completely good gaming for the most separate. Part, yeah. That's just good gaming, nothing Correct. to do with Vio One. Okay, Correct. got it. Um, 
don't have any other specific questions other than the roadmap. I, I don't know if you can give more color on the road. I'm just like dying for like. I know, you know, I get that. You know, gonna hold. Ben, I get this. Uh, I get this all day long, right? People ask me what's what's coming up, especially our community. Everyone yeah. wants to know what's coming up. And the best I could do, because we're a public company, is I, I can't just hand out our roadmap as, until it's announced. Uh, right. That's one thing that I, I I make sure that you know I, I make you know we're when we're ready to announce our our, our new things, which we have plenty in work. Um, it, it has to be publicly announced first. I can't announce it here. So okay. uh, what uh, the one thing is is that we're and I I mentioned this before we're committed to this game and this intellectual property. Of micro buddies and you're going to see a lot of a lot more development not only on the game but uh, also ancillary things associated with the ip itself what, what is the you've referred to the ip a couple of times what is it uh, about the ip you think is special here micro buddies yeah oh i think it's fantastic i think that so the ip specifically what what is it, it it's patents around something or? the characters the characters yeah the intellectual okay. property having to do with micro buddies the story behind it um, the, I think the artwork and, and the appeal of the characters themselves lends itself to a, a broad demographic. Um, just like you would see in other uh, NFT projects, the artwork, they're looking at doing other things with their, you know, their IP, like board apes and what have you. It's more than just an NFT project. It's, you know, they're looking at doing all sorts of things with, with that intellectual property more than just you know nft projects we're, okay. we we you know i would think that's something that we would want to do and and i think it lends itself perfectly right uh sounds good so hey guys this is a unique opportunity we've got david sterling coo here this is your chance if you have any questions not covered yet i see john is about to speak john go ahead hi uh thank you david for uh coming here and answering our questions um i I'm curious to know if talks in in amongst management revolves around the onboarding of new members. I know uh, several of us are investors here, and I don't know of anyone that is actually playing the game. I know of a few that have mentioned that they've tried and just got frustrated with the complexity of joining and just sort of thought, ah, oh, I'll give up. And and it's very oh, I find it very odd that people who have here who have invested money in the stock are not even playing the game and yeah. the reason being that it's just too complicated to to get in so is that a, you know big topic of conversation with management that that this has to be fixed i uh, john yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry you uh have you tried to get have you tried playing i have not myself oh okay yeah i i think that in, in when you do when you're in game development you're always looking to improve your your, your onboarding and your player journey. And that is something that we're always, uh, since I've joined, we're always focused on now. Um, we want to make, make sure that is uh, a, a smooth and enjoyable process. Um, so yet to, to answer your question, I, I would have to say, yes, we're focused on making sure that that process is smooth, enjoyable, and that people like yourself and the people that you've spoken to um, can can enjoy and can actually take part in playing the game because it's it's a it's it's a very exciting I think it's a very exciting game it's it's in in if there are uh, if there are issues that have been reported to us that this thing is uh, that they're having trouble then we investigate it and we start creating uh, uh, patches or fixes or reviewing the um, process for an onboarding process, uh, the whole gameplay process to ensure that it's the best it could possibly. Um, there was a PR recently um, about some, uh, some news coming out that you're working on a patch or the tech team is working on a, a major significant patch to the game. Is there anything you can talk about how that's progressing or when that might come into play? Well, we just we just released one yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry, okay. Friday. So uh, the patching process for this for us is an ongoing thing. We're always looking at, uh, our, you know, it's reported to us that this may be happening. Sometimes we get reports or, where things are just we can't reproduce them. And this is normal in gaming where a user has an issue and and we can't uh, reproduce the problem. That may just be a one-off thing, but. 
because the dynamics of the game, the underworking the, are, are so complex to create this kind of experience, uh, there may be some combinations of gameplay that may lead to something that requires a patch. Uh, and we're doing that consistently every day. Okay. Can you talk and, about, <clears throat> go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, and, and, and we're not, like I said, we're not one and done with this game. It's, it's, a, it's a process. So we're always looking to improve our, our, our game at every, at every level. Okay. And um, you, you talked briefly about it earlier, about your membership. Do you know offhand how many members are currently playing the game right now? Uh, well, we have 1,400 owners right now. You can see that okay. on uh, OpenSea. Uh, we have 15,000 plus in Discord. Um, so, it, you know, it's, it's a number in between there. There's a, if you look at our Discord, there is a whole, uh, one of our, 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 uh, our members have created actually a group uh, that I, I think has 60 plus members that are overseeing gameplay. They're called FUD. Um, so uh, it's, it's a number between 1,400 and 15,000. Uh, I couldn't tell you what it is today right now, but uh, it's a fairly healthy community. I think that as time goes on and, and we create even better experience for our players, uh, that community is gonna grow. So the 1,400 owners- Owners, yeah. Are, don't represent all of the players? There's more people in there playing that are not counted as owners? I, I, don't, I, I don't know that, John. I can tell you okay. that there's, uh, there's plenty of people in our Discord that okay. may or may not be playing the game that are just you know interested in, in talking about the game. I don't know. Okay. Um, maybe they're just looking at it. You know, they're not interested in playing the game. They're looking at it as, you know, taking the temperature. Of, is this a good investment uh, that I can buy some buddies and sit on them? Uh, that's the difference between an owner and somebody that's sitting in a Discord that's following uh, the game itself. Okay. And in that recent PR, there was uh, there was uh, a mention of a new game being worked on. That's that they're hoping that uh, Good Gaming is hoping to release by the end of this year. Can you talk about that? Uh, I believe I believe what we said is twenty twenty three, but okay. uh, there's we're always working in in what's coming next. So. I would stay tuned for an announcement on that. Uh, we will. We are looking to. I'm just being careful of what I say, um, sure. but uh, we're always looking at different, new, and different things. Uh, as I said before, the the game is our priority, and and this is not a one and done thing. We're always uh, looking at continued development, and uh, stay tuned for uh, an announcement on that. Okay. And one last thing, uh, you were brought in to, um, I guess, fill a, a role in, in the company. Um, it's, it sounds to me like your past experience is mostly in media. Um, is that accurate or, or is gaming a big part well, gaming of Gaming is, is a medium, right? Okay. I'm thinking more like, um, like product like video production type stuff no uh, video okay. production uh well i have that experience uh actually a lot uh, some of my video production experience came from doing games so okay. uh like uh, the stuff that i did on the twitch platform if you remember twitch started off as just being games and then now has evolved to you know a fairly expansive entertainment platform uh you know, if you if you take a look at my experience, it, the gaming has always been one of the verticals that I focused on, uh, but not limited to other things. Uh, I have, you, you know, you look at stuff like metaverse, and that's something that we always communicate about. Uh, that is certainly something, you know, that would fit into this also. When you were hired, what what is you what was the purpose of your uh, of your coming there to to fill what role? Um, what what's what's under your umbrella? What's what's your top of your to do list? Like what's 
Well, as a chief operating officer, I think that uh, the position itself is to oversee the business as a whole, um, to bring uh, not only operational skill set, but also strategic. Um, you know, this, this, this IP has um, certainly possibilities and opportunities around it that uh, are both in gaming and outside gaming. And, and um, I think that's, you know, with my background, I think I fit that, you know, that, uh, that perfectly. Okay. And where do you see this company going in the future? Um, I mean, you obviously came here, you, you saw something you like that you believe yeah. in. Um, what do you see happening in the future? And, 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 uh, well, I think, I, I think that this company has, uh, a unique opportunity now has a great opportunity with not only this IP but uh, our growth story into becoming a a, a a comprehensive content studio. Okay, thanks very much for yeah, I appreciate it. Nice talking to you, John. Yeah, you too. I have a question. Uh, thanks for those questions. I think Michael uh, Michael Cook has some questions. Hey, yeah. Michael. Hi, David. Thanks for coming here to. Uh, it's my pleasure with That's your uh, experience and uh, uh, inside knowledge. Uh, so uh, my question, uh, uh, Ben, can you uh, pull up the uh, OpenSea um, I'll do that right now. website again? There you go. So my question pertains to, uh, to this, um, or what, what this refers to, which is, both uh, a two two pronged, um, perhaps problematic uh, issues. Uh, one is the uh, velocity of the transactions, which the graph represents, mm -hmm. uh, which um, has pretty much come to a standstill. And and Ben, if you could scroll down a little bit. And the second part is the actual uh, transactions. Yeah, give me one second. That's actually on a slideshow. I got to pull up the website, but oh. pull it up. No, we'll get it. Uh, so, so this yeah, is activity, the activity. Yeah, here yeah. we go. Okay, here Transactions. we go. Transactions. So, and the second, the second issue is the actual dollar volume that's transacted uh, per um, per sale or exchange, which is almost negligible uh, for the most part. And my understanding is that your revenue model is based on 5% of the uh, transaction uh, dollar value or ETH value, uh, but translated in dollar value, it's not that much. So um, how do you see that? Is this, is this uh, a, a workable um, formula for, for funding? Uh, your future aspirations and goals? Well, I, I think so. I see some of these buddies that you're looking at are lower end buddies, so they're not going to be uh, expensive. I think some of the high end buddies that have been gone, the evolution that are more evolved are going to be, the people are gonna sit on those as, uh, uh, as an investment uh, for players that, may, that are coming in that want to buy a higher end buddy. But, you know, this function, I mean, you see some of these are, you know, $4, $2. Um, my focus is, this is a marketplace for players to come in and, and interact with other players. Uh, and we would, uh, we take a percentage of, of those interactions, uh, those transactions as the game continues. And video gaming is really, is, is an ebb and flow uh, mo model. You have, you know, a lot of interest at the beginning, and then as you patch and as you uh, release, um, you know, uh, volume goes up and 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 down, and that's good. That's pretty much the way video games go. Uh, is it a viable model? I think I think we're getting a lot of uh, uh, buddy creation at this point from our owners. Uh, we're always looking towards ways to enhance uh, the value of our buddies uh, so that new players come in and, and onboard. But my focus is always on the community 
and making sure that our community has what they need for an enjoyable ex gaming experience. And the investment side of it will take care of itself should a user want to do that. Um, we're committed to making the best game possible uh, and make sure that our players are having a uh, an enjoyable gaming experience and discovering ex discovering experience with our buddies. So the fact that the our multiple for uh, owners and buddies is so high, I think that lends itself to you know a game that is enjoyable to play. Uh, is there improvement? Yeah, there's always improvement, and we're constantly focused on improving our gameplay and our experience for our players. All right, well, um, um, revenue is an important uh, element in uh, creating shareholder value. Uh, so, yep, yep, and you, can, um, you, can't, you can't have revenue unless you have players and happy players that are continually playing. Uh, so you, you fix that front end and make sure that that's a great experience and make sure that the stories that you're telling about that experience and the the community is healthy and strong and getting and happy and then the revenue will take care should take care of itself um if your product is no good uh and has problems then and you don't pay attention to that then you're guaranteed to have zero revenue okay michael that answer uh well um yeah, I'm the. I'm not so much concerned about the transaction uh, velocity or the amount of transactions involved, uh, but if you know if if it's a viable model, I would think at some point the actual dollar value of the transactions have to be much much higher in order to be. Um, a, a viable uh, revenue model. Yeah, uh, I was wondering the same thing. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I, I get everything you're saying, David, but I do get curious at all the, these transactions that are like $1.32, $2.14, $1.73. And, and these are, uh, for the most part, down the average size of these transactions, uh, average value of the transactions from the first you know week or two. I, I I mean, it's a bit, our business is an ebb and flow business. As far as the dollar transactions, I think that we're seeing people possibly offloading the lower end buddies for what they could. I can't comment on the market, uh, the open sea market for what people are willing to buy and sell buddies for. Uh, I need to make sure that people are playing our game and enjoying the game. And that the they're creating these buddies, and that the on ramp for new players um, is as smooth as possible. Because new players, play, our current players' happiness and our onboarding for new players is of utmost importance. You certainly don't want something like uh, Bored Apes, where you know you only have a certain amount of players, and they're exchanging. Uh, their NFTs for you know a high dollar value. Uh, that's an exclusive club that really offers, really is more like a Amex Black Card than it is a, a gaming experience. No, I get that, and, and obviously that's important uh, because you want to spread, you you want to expand your base as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but also at some point, I would I would hope. I mean. From the perspective of an investor, of course, yeah, uh, and not as much as a game player or a game developer, even, but just as an investor, uh, the the prospect of uh, of good revenues is is uh, intrinsically tied within um, how much how much um, uh, revenue is coming in, and the best way. That I can see that that's uh, addressable is is where your buddies are being transacted at at higher dollar values. Yeah. Is there any, is there any way you can? Um, I don't want to. I, I don't want to use the word manipulate, but encourage uh, higher uh, transaction values per transaction. 
Well, I, I think that's a product of having, uh, you know, the ebb and flow of having players come in and gameplay. So if you want somebody to use your product, uh, the product has to be, you know, solid and you need new players to come in and, and produce more buddies. So, and, and then go through the game. I think what you're seeing is a, a marketplace for, uh, that's going to feed right into our uh, buddy master program where players will be able to onboard into the game, uh, and quickly and easily for a fair price, and then, uh, be able to play the game and create even more buddies that as you become, as you're able to manufacture higher end buddies, those things would filter into the marketplace at, at uh, whatever the market, you know, supply and demand would dictate. Um, I, I would think that, you know, that will, should take care of itself. I certainly wouldn't want to manipulate anything. Um, the market is a function of, of the supply and demand. And I think that uh, for what you're seeing, that feeds right into our strategy for buddy. So it's a matter. So you're saying so it's a matter of time. Time will work it out. Well, I think so. I mean, you know, like I said, game, game, game. You know, any video game goes through ebb and flows of players. You get the initial spike at the beginning. Uh, you get the people playing the game, and then as the game evolves, and and to, you're able to uh, patch and 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 um, uh, develop new areas of gameplay and, and onboard new players, then you get this, you know, another wave of, of sales. Uh, it certainly isn't, uh, you know, through the roof straight up for, uh, at least in my experience, game, game development, uh, even an NFT game or any kind of video game, it's up front and then it, then it's uh, peaks and valleys, but you do get the peaks and you do get the valleys. So this, this seems, you know, after post launch, this seems, uh, fairly consistent with no question, if I may, um, do you, do you feel you're adequately funded for your future, uh, visions, uh, or for the fulfillment of fruition of your future, uh, vision of where your games are headed or, uh, gamer as a game development company is, I think so. Yeah. Ideally headed. Yeah, I do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, great, insightful questions. Uh, thank you for that. There's just a couple questions in chat uh, from Colton. He wanted to know what platforms the game is available on and also just verifying your, your business model, uh, the 5% royalty or what other avenues of revenue you're getting from the game. Yeah, it does take the second part. It's the, the percentage of revenue for Matic and the percentage of revenue from... The, the transactions on the buddies. Um, and the, the platform is, it's basically uh, web-based. So you, you go onto the website, you hit start playing the game from there. Um, currently you have, uh, you have to go on OpenSea or obtain a buddy and then start playing the game. Are there any plans to bring that to iOS or Android? Uh, it's, it's definitely something that is, uh, we're looking at. Okay. Is that, I'm not familiar, but with other NFT games out there, is that standard? I think there are some expected? that are doing that. Uh, it really, I, I think what you have to look at is the style of game. Does this lend itself to mobile? Um, so, you know, it's definitely something we're looking at, but for right now it's, it's on web. Okay, and just to clarify the transactions, it's a 5% royalty at, at OpenSea, right? But I think there's also a transact within the game, you're also getting something? Yeah, there's royalties. Uh, there's, uh, there was first the, the, the nano factory token sales, then the royalties on the micro buddies, the 5% the in ETH or stable coins and the 0 0.01 Matic per replication. There's also, you know, there's, uh, we just opened our merchandise, our store for merch and which is in the press release this past Friday. Um, and then we, we have announced that there eventually will be uh, add-ons to the game in the PFP uh, that uh, will be coming. So that, that's our, re our multiple revenue streams. Okay. Uh, we had a question from Shmuel. Um, have there been any 
either projections or goals that you have in terms of number of users or any kind of metrics, let's say by the end of the year, have you put out any goals or? I don't think we've said, I don't think we've publicly released that yet, but I, uh, stay tuned. Um, if, if anything is released regarding that stuff, it'll be publicly released first. Okay, great. I, I have a one final kind of question for myself. Or, or maybe just a statement and you can confirm I have the, I sure. have the right understanding. But I think I saw in one of the press releases or is maybe a combination of uh, comments from one of your developers in Discord and the press releases kind of, I don't know if this is me reading between the lines or if you outright stated it, but in future games, obviously you said you're developing another game for 2023 or the end of this year, is the idea that all these games will support each other, right? So basically, if you have micro buddies you created in the first game, that they'll have utility in other games. So it's kind of an ecosystem that you're planning on building. Is that the right interpretation that I'm getting yeah. from what yeah, I've Yeah, I think that you, uh, in a generic sense, I think utility is important for NFTs. I don't think that if you look at if you look at what's happened in 2021 when NFTs really caught fire, like in March. It was just, uh, it was really just an art form, right? It was just a way to create either user generated or machine generated art that, you know, could be, or, you know, was looked upon as something that would be collectible as, as art itself. Then you got, it started to evolve. And what's interesting about the whole segment is that, you know, it really evolved very quickly. I mean, NFTs as a segment, when you look at, uh, console gaming or something like that, it takes time to for it to evolve. Like for instance, Nintendo came out in you know the 80s. Uh, and it wasn't until the the gaming console actually got an Ethernet port on the back did it really evolve. Did that whole used to be just single player and it was it was before the internet and and then you know, console gaming evolved with the, with the with the onset of the Ethernet port, uh, and then you know the multiplayer took over. If, but if you look at NFTs, that be, that whole segment evolved in less than a year. It went from an art based uh, format platform to it. You know, it had to have some kind of game tie into it. To it had to have some kind of cross-platform utility. To it had to have real-world functionality in order for it to make sense. That happened in less than a year. So I think what you're looking at in terms of NFTs as a as a ongoing um, source of entertainment, uh, but or an investment, uh, it has to have certain things involved in it now. Otherwise, it, you know, it's got to have some kind of status and identity. If it's just going to be an art form, uh, an art uh, experience, it has to have some kind of backing to it with some famous artist or something like that in order to have legitimacy. So to answer your question, I think as a company, we have to look at all those types of things when you're looking at the NFT uh, landscape uh, or you're just creating art. You know, it's it. There's so, as a company, when you're looking at NFTs, I think you have to be considering all those types of things into your roadmap. Uh, whether that happens or not, that is yet to be seen. But we we certainly have eyes wide open on what NFTs are today and what will they be tomorrow. That's helpful. Uh, yeah, it's five twenty. There's one la one question that came in the chat. Can you take that last question? Sure. Sure. All right. It's from Dave S. He says, what attracted you to such a small micro cap company? So you've worked at Sony, uh, probably other places you worked that were probably much bigger. So you're talking about a five to six person distributed team. That's a very different type of opportunity. So what attracted you to that? Well, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, it, I think the challenge, just the opportunity behind it, the people that I'm working with are great people. They're committed to it. Uh, the, 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 um, people that I have our development team are a great bunch of people. And, uh, if you look at my history, uh, even when I worked at a big company, like a Sony, uh, I spun up development teams 
even smaller than this that grew into very large teams. So it's very similar to what I've done in the past. And when I met these guys, I think that they're, they have a great you know, vision for the company and desire to grow this company. And uh, when you have that, that's, that's half the battle, I think. Um, so the, the opportunity and the challenge is, is fantastic. Okay, great. Thank you, David. I appreciate your time very Thank much. Uh, we'll be following your, your uh, progress as a company and with micro buddies and Look hopefully we'll have you back in a quarter or two with some really good updates. For certain. Thanks Thank a lot you. for the great. time, everybody. Have a great Thank time. you, David. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Take you. care. Bye-bye. Yep. Take care. And for the rest of you, just a couple of housekeeping notes. If you're a VIP member, you can collaborate in the GMER research group. Uh, upcoming event this Sunday night uh, for our VIPs, we have an update on Smith Micro, SMSI, and also QC Copper and Gold, QCCUF um, from James and Chris Hampton. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're following us on YouTube and Twitter. And we'll see you next time. Our recording is going to end here. We'll hang on for just a few minutes afterwards for a little bit of overtime with our VIP members.